are back at SC22 Supercomputing Conference in Dallas. My name's Paul Gillen, and my co-host, John Furrier, Silicon Angle founder. And a uh, huge exhibit floor here, uh, so much activity, so much going on in HPC, and much of it around uh, the chips from, uh, from AMD, which has been on a roll lately, uh, and a, in partnership with Dell. Our guests are Brian Payne, Dell Technologies VP of Product Management for ISG Midrange Technical Solutions, and Raghu Nambiar, Corporate Vice President of Data System, Data Center Ecosystem and Application Engineering, that's quite a mouthful, at AMD. And gentlemen, welcome, thank you. Thanks for having us. This has been an evolving relationship between you two companies, obviously a growing one, and uh, something Dell was part of the uh, big general rollout, AMD's new, new chipset. Uh, last week, uh, talk about how that that uh, relationship has evolved over the last five years. Yeah, sure. Well, so I, it goes back to the the advent of the Epic architecture. So we were there from the beginning, partnering well before the launch five years ago, thinking about hey, how can we come up with a way to solve customer problems, address workloads in unique ways, and that was kind of the origin of the relationship. We came out some, with some really disruptive and, uh, and and capable platforms, and then it continues. It's continued till then, all the way to the to the launch of last week, where we've introduced four of the most capable platforms we've ever had in the power portfolio. Yeah, I'm really excited about the partnership with, uh, with, with, with the Dell. As uh, Brian said, we have been partnering very closely for the uh, last uh, five years since we introduced the first generation of uh, Epic. So we collaborate on uh, you know, um, system design, uh, validation, performance benchmarks, and more importantly, on uh, software optimizations and the solutions to offer uh, out, of the box, out of the box experience to our customers, whether it is uh, HPC or uh, databases, big data analytics, or AI. You know, you guys have been on theCUBE, uh, you guys are veterans, 2012, 2014, back in the day. So much has changed over the years. Raghu, you were on the found, founding chair of the TPC for AI. Um, we've talked about the different iterations of power service. So much has changed. Why the focus on these workloads now? What's the inflection point that we're seeing here at Supercomputing? It feels like we've been in this, you know, run the ball, get it, gain a yard, move the chains, you know. But we feel, I feel like there's a, moment where the, there's going to be an un, unleashing of innovation around new use cases. Where's the workloads, why the performance, what are some of those use cases right now that are sure. front, um, front and center? Yeah, I mean, uh, if, you, if you look at today, the enterprise ecosystem has become extremely complex. Okay, um, people are running uh, traditional workloads like relational database management systems, also new generation of workloads with the uh, AI, and HPC, and actually like uh, um, uh, AI, um, actually HPC augmented, augmented with uh, some of the AI AI technologies. So the, what customers are looking for is, as I said, um, 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 out of the box experience, or uh, uh, time to value is extremely critical. Unlike in the past, you know, people, uh, the customers don't have the, the time and resources to run months long of POCs, okay? So um, th that's one idea that we are, uh, uh, focusing, uh, you know, working closely with the Dell to give uh, out of the box experience. Um, again, you know, um, the, the the enterprise uh, application ecosystem is, uh, you know, uh, really becoming complex. And uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, um, some of the industry standard benchmark is uh, designed to give uh, the fair um, comparison of uh, performance and price performance for uh, our end uh, and, and our end uh, uh, customers. And uh, you know, Brian and uh, my team has been working closely um, to demonstrate our joint capabilities in the AI space with a uh, you know, set of uh, uh, TPCX AI benchmark cards last week. It was the major highlight of our um, launch last week. Brian, you got showing the demo in the booth at Dell here. Yeah. Um, uh, not demo, the product is available. What are you seeing for your use cases that customers are kind of rallying around now and what are they doubling down on? Yeah, you know, I, so, so Raghu, I, I think, teed it up well. The Really, data is the, is the currency the, of business and all organizations today. And that's what's pushing people to figure out, hey, both traditional workloads as well as new workloads. So we've got, in the, in the traditional workload space, you, you still have ERP systems like SAP, et cetera, and we, we've announced world records there. 100 plus percent improvements in our single socket system, 70% in dual. We actually posted a 40% advantage over the best general result just this, this week. So I mean, we're excited about that in the traditional space. But what's exciting, like why are we here? Why, why are people thinking about 
HPC and, and, and AI, it's about how do we make use of that data, that, that data being the currency, and how do we push in that space. So Raghu mentioned the TPC AI benchmark. We, we launched, or we announced, in collaboration, you talk about how do we work together, nine world records in that space. In one case, it's a 3X improvement over, over prior generations. So the workloads that people care about is like, how can I process this data more effectively? How can I store it and secure it more effectively? And ultimately, how do I make decisions about where we're going, whether it's a scientific breakthrough or a commercial application? That's what's really driving the, the use cases and the demand from our customers today. I think one of the interesting trends we've seen over the last couple of years is a resurgence in, in interest in task-specific hardware around AI. In fact, uh, venture capital companies invested $1.8 billion last year in AI hardware startups. Uh, I wonder, and these companies are not doing CPUs necessarily, or GPUs, they're doing accelerators, FPGAs, um, ASICs, uh, but you have to be looking at that activity and what these companies are doing. What are you taking away from that? How does that affect your own product development plans, both on the uh, chip side and on the system side? I think um, the future of computing is going to be heterogeneous. Okay, I mean a CPU solving a certain type of problems like general purpose computing, databases, big data analytics, uh, GPU solving uh, uh, you know, problems in um, AI and uh, visualization, and the DPUs uh, and FPGAs accelerators solving, um, uh, you know, offloading uh, you know, uh, 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 some of the uh, tasks from the CPU and uh, providing a real time, uh, real time performance. And of course, uh, you know, the, the software optimizations are going to be critical to stitch everything together. Whether it is uh, HPC or AI or other workloads, you know, again, as I said, um, heterogeneous computing is going to be the good, yeah. going to be the future. Yeah, and, and for us as a uh, platform provider, the heterogeneous you know solutions mean we have to design systems that are capable of supporting that. So if as you think about the compute power, whether it's a GPU or a CPU, continuing to push the envelope in terms of you know, to do the computations, power consumption, things like that. How do we design a system that can be, you know, incredibly efficient and also be able to support the scaling, you know, to solve those complex problems? So that gets into challenges around, you know, both liquid cooling, but also making the most out of air cooling. And so we're seeing, not only are we, we driving up, you know, the, uh, the capability of the systems, we're actually improving the energy efficiency. And those, the most recent systems that we, that we launched around the CPU, which is still kind of at the heart of everything today, you know, we're seeing 50% improvements, you know, gen to gen in terms of performance per watt capability. So it's it's about like how do we package these systems in effective ways and make sure that our customers can get you know the advertised benefit, so to speak, of the of the new chip technologies. Yeah, to add to that, you know, performance, scalability, total cost of ownership, these are the key considerations. But now energy efficiency has become more important than ever. Yeah. Uh, you know, our commitment to you know, sustainability. So one of the things that we have demonstrated last week was um, uh, with uh, our new generation of uh, Epic uh, Genova-based systems, we can do a one, five to one consolidation, significantly reducing the, uh, 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 the, 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 the energy requirements. The power is huge, the costs are going up. A glo it's a global issue. Yeah. yeah it How is. do you squeeze more performance too out of it at the same time? I mean, Smaller, faster, cheaper, Paul, you wrote a story about you know, this weekend about hardware and AI making hardware so much more important. You got more power requirements, you got the mm -hmm. sustainability, but you need more horsepower, more compute. What's different in the architecture? If you guys could share like today versus years ago, what's different in, as these generation step function value increases? So one what's of the different? major drivers from the processor perspective uh, is uh, um, if you look at the, 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 the latest generation of uh, uh, processors, the five uh, nanometer technology, bringing uh, uh, efficiency and density, so we are able to pack um, uh, 96 processor cores. Um, uh, you know, in a two socket system, you're talking about 196 processor cores. And of course, uh, you know, other en enhancements like IPC uplift, uh, bringing uh, DDR5 uh, uh, to the market, PCHN5 uh, to the market, offering overall you know, um, performance uplift of more than 2.5x for certain workloads. And of course, you know, significantly reducing the, the power footprint. Yeah. 
I'm oh, sorry, I was just going to, I mean, architecturally speaking, you know, then how do we take the 96 cores and surround it, and deliver a balanced ecosystem to make sure that we can get the, the IO out of the system and make sure we've got the right data storage. So, I mean, you'll see 60% improvements in total storage in the system. I think in 2012, we're talking about 10 gig ethernet. Well, you know, now we're on to 100 and 400 on the, on, yep. the, on the forefront. So it's like, how do we keep up with this increased power by having, our computing capabilities, both offload and, and, and core computing, and make sure we've got a system that can deliver the desired So the results. little things like the bus, the PCI yeah. cards, the NICs, the connectors, have to be rethought through. Is yeah. that what you're getting at? And yeah, the GPUs, absolutely. which are huge power consumers. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, cooling, we, we, we introduce and, and we call it smart cooling as a part of our, our latest generation of servers. I mean, the thermal design inside of a, of a server is a, uh, is a complex, uh, you know, complex system, right? And doing that efficiently because, of course, fans consume power. So, I mean, yeah, those are the kind of considerations that we have to put through to make sure that you're not either throttling performance because you don't have, you know, keeping the chips at the right temperature, and, and you know, ultimately when you do that, you're hurting the, the, the productivity of the, of the investment. So, I mean, it's, it's our responsibility to put our thoughts and, and deliver the systems that are going to You mentioned perform. data too, if you bring in the data, one of the big discussions going into the big Amazon show coming up, reInvent, is um, egress costs. Yeah. Right, so now you've got compute and how you design data latency, mm -hmm. you know, processing, it's not just contained in a machine. That's right. You got right. to think about outside that machine, talking to other machines. Is there an intelligent <laughs> network developing? I mean, what's the future look well, like? Well, I mean, you know, so this is a this is an area that that's you know, it, it's it's fun and 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 you know, Dell's in a unique position to work on this problem, right? We have seventy percent of the mission house, seventy percent of the mission critical data that that exists in the world. How do we bring that closer to compute? How do we deliver system level solutions? So server, compute, so recently we announced uh, innovations around NVMe over fabric. So now you've got the NVMe technology in the SAN. How do we connect that more efficiently across the servers? Those are the kinds, and then guide our customers to make use of that. Those are the kinds of, of challenges that we're trying to unlock the value of the data by, by making sure we're I mean, there are there are there are a lot of lessons learned uh, from uh, you know classic HPC and some of the you know big data analytics like uh, you know Hadoop's of the world you know you know distributed processing for uh, you know, crunching a large amount of uh, amount of data. With the growth of the cloud, you see uh, you know some pundits saying that data centers will become obsolete in five years and <laughs> everything's going to move to the cloud. Obviously, data center market is still growing and is projected to grow, continue to grow. But what's the argument? For, for captive hardware, for, for owning a data center these days when the cloud offers such convenience and allegedly cost benefit? Well, I, I would say the, the reality is, is that we're, and, and I think the industry at large has acknowledged this, that we're living in a multi-cloud world and multi-cloud methods are going to be necessary to, uh, you know, to, to solve problems and, and compete. And so, I mean, you know, in some cases, whether it's security or latency, you know, there, there's, a, there's a push to have things in your own data center. And then of course, growth at the edge, right? I mean, that's, that's really turning you know, things on, on their head, if you will, getting data closer to where it's being generated. And so I would say we're, we're going to live in this edge cloud you know, uh, and, and core data center environment with multi, you know, def different cloud providers providing solutions and services where it makes sense, and it's incumbent on us to figure out how do we stitch together that data platform, that data layer, and help customers, you know, synthesize this data to, to generate, you know, the results they need. You know, one of the things I want to get into on the cloud, you mentioned that, Paul, is that we see the rise of graph databases. Mm -hmm. And so, is that on the radar for the AI? Because a lot of more graph data is being brought in uh, the database market's incredibly robust. Yep. Um, it's one of the key areas that people want performance out of. Um, and as cloud native becomes the modern application development, a lot more infrastructure as code's happening, which means that the internet and the, the networks and the process should be programmable. Right. So graph database has been one of those things. Have you guys done any work there? What's some data there you can share yeah, on that? Actually, um, you know, uh, we have a work, uh, worked closely with a company called the Tiger Graph. Uh, they are in the graph database uh, space, um, and we have done uh, you know, a couple of uh, case studies. One on the healthcare side, and the other one on the financial side for fraud detection. Yeah, I think they have a. This is an um, emerging area, um, and uh, and uh, we are able to demonstrate industry-leading performance for uh, graph databases. Very excited about yeah. it. 
It's interesting, yeah. it brings up the vertical versus horizontal applications. Where is the AI, HPC kind of shining? Is it like horizontal and vertical? Solutions or well, what's uh, what's your vision? Yeah, there? Well, well, I mean, so this is a case where I'm I'm also a user, so I I, I own our analytics platform in, internally, and we're actually we we have a chat box for our product development organization to figure out hey what trends are going on with the with the systems that we sell, whether it's how they're being consumed or or what we've sold. And we actually use graph database technology in order to 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 power that that chat box, so I'm actually in a position where I'm like, I want to get these new systems <laughs> into, into our environment right, so we can gra deliver. Graphs under, underlie most machine learning models. Yeah, right? yeah. So uh, we can talk about, there's so much to talk about in this space, so little time, and unfortunately we're out of that. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, fascinating discussion. Brian Payne, Dell Technologies, uh, Raghu Nambiar, AMD, congratulations on the successful launch of your new chipset and uh, the, the growth of in your uh, your relationship over these past years. Thanks so much for being with us here on theCUBE. Super, thank, thank you all. Much. It's thank great you. to be back. We'll be right back from Supercomputing 22 in Dallas. Thank you.